Good morning. Welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Joe Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Join me at Market Site is Adam First. He's the CEO of Byte Mobility Networks. Thanks again for being back here with us. Good to be back with you, Joe. All right, so refresh the audience um, on BIM and what are some of the new recent developments since we uh, last met in November? So we are a private label debit platform. Uh, we basically connect consumer checking accounts to merchants' apps and websites. Um, and we've been called a payments company that drives consumer engagement, and we've been called a consumer engagement company that just happens to do payments. We're fine with either because we think we're addressing uh, retailers and merchants' major needs, which is revenue growth, cost reduction, driving better uh, relationships with their customers, and ultimately uh, preventing data or brand disintermediation. So. We've been pretty busy. Right. I can imagine. Well, I, I mean, I know from one at NASDAQ, our analytics hub, everything's all about data, data, data. So yeah. what kind of data are you collecting and, and what is this analysis used for? So data is something that we're really uh, obviously very much into when it comes to payments, but data is incredibly important to us because it will help merchants create a more successful program. So we're about to roll out with Philip 66. That's public news. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, that's been in the media a little bit in the petrol world. Um, and we are this close to signing another really, really big national retailer. I was hoping to actually be able to talk about it with you today, uh, but that will bring us closer to 20% of the United States petrol market in terms of location. So we're super excited. We're going to have lots and lots of data. And what we're going to be able to do is not only uh, use our data to help merchants lower fraud and mitigate fraud, et cetera, but we're also going to be able to use our data to help them drive promotions and effectiveness of the program. And that's really where the consumer engagement aspect of our platform comes in uh, and, and ultimately uh, their success. All merchants want their brand associated with a better buying experience. You're seeing that across the board um, and we're going to help them uh, be able to do that. Now credit card surcharges, there's been a lot of talk around that recently. So how can BIM solve the retail industry's transaction fee issue? So our transaction fees are between 50 and 95% cheaper. Uh, than what uh, they're being charged by branded uh, networks. So that's uh, from a cost perspective. The uh, Ninth Circuit uh, of Appeals in California recently said that surcharging was, would be allowed. And I think merchants are having a really hard time grappling with that. It's definitely the relief that they wanted to get from the courts, but how does that impact the consumer experience? And I think a lot of merchants, rather than charging uh, extra fees for payments, would rather say when you pay with this, you get a discounted fee and better uh, and better benefits, whether it's discounts or promotions or conveniences, what have you. And that's really what our platform enables them to do. Because our transactions are so much cheaper, but don't sacrifice the reliability that they need, every transaction we approve is guaranteed. It gets settled into their account uh, the next morning at 9 a.m. when the first Fed window opens. Um, they're getting the transaction prices they need, the reliability they have to have, but th it enables them to reinvest back into their customer relationships. And I think most merchants that we're talking to would prefer, say, when you pay with this, you get all these benefits, right. as opposed to when you pay with this, we have to charge you more. And then you have to think about, is my competitor doing it? Are they not doing it? Do I look worse than them? Am I the same as them? Right. Um, so I think most merchants would rather go out with a positive experience, and that's what we enable them to do. Well, the big trend of retail continues to be that e-commerce is taking market share from traditional yeah. brick and mortar. So what, how can brick and mortar stay competitive with dwindling foot traffic? Every retailer we talk to, regardless of the sector, even if it's something like gas stations, uh, grocery stores, pharmacies, QSRs, they all want to get closer and more intimate with their customers. And whether it's e-commerce or in-store experience or mobile experience, they have to embrace that. They have to be where their customers are purchasing their goods and services. And every retailer that we're talking to, again, regardless of, of area, is trying to grapple with that. And you look at Amazon Go, right? Okay. Amazon Go, I haven't been to Seattle yet to the store, but when you think about it, it's wow. Every customer that goes, or every consumer that goes into a grocery store hates checkout. It's just, they hate it, right? Um, and Amazon is solving that with that. And they're wowing their customers because it's a new experience, it creates some excitement, and it creates a lot of convenience. And every merchant, again, regardless of sector, is trying to get that wow factor, whether it's 10 cents off a gallon of gas or coupons for the convenience store when you go buy gas or uh, a pharmacy chain that wants to uh, get closer with their moms and caregivers offering um, prescriptions being filled within 15 minutes when, it's, uh, when a prescription comes in from a pediatrician's office with the flu epidemic going on. That's right. incredibly important. Um, all those kinds of things. I think we're creating a platform that allows merchants to say, here is a new buying experience that we are defining for you. 
allowing the merchant to have their brand get the credibility and the credit for doing that and create a different relationship. Right. Um, and so that's really interesting what's happening now. I mean, we're such an on-demand society. We are. Right. So we are. Um, to wrap up, what other trends you're seeing right now in the payments industry? Um, I, the credit card fees are a big one right now. I think merchants are grappling with that. But in, in payments in general, it's, it's really becoming integrated. The big theme, I think, for 2018 is payments being integrated into the consumer experience. Mm -hmm. And I've written before on this in, uh, in, in op-eds and so forth about payments going from the very back end of the process to the thing you do at the end of the transaction to consummate it and leave. Putting that in front of the transaction, allowing that to define the consumer buying experience. So when you pay with Philips Debit, they're calling it um, direct pay, or when you do brand XYZ cash or whatever they want to call it, this redefines the consumer experience. So whether you want to buy on e-com or mobile or in-store, it's making sure the merchant is able to create an environment and a situation and a scenario for their customers, which they view is better and either more valuable or more convenient or whatever. And that's really the theme, I think, in 2018. How can brands drive revenue growth, reduce costs, um, drive uh, consumer affinity and brand affinity and loyalty? and prevent disintermediation. And those are themes that I don't think are going away anytime soon. This is gonna be a multi-year theme that happens throughout retail. And we're right in the middle of it, so we feel pretty good about it. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today. Super excited about that announcement. We'll have to hear about we'll that. We'll let you know, it was this close, Jill, it was that close. I know, we're excited about it. Thank you. And thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.